Good afternoon. My name is Carlos Sanchez. I'm Public Affairs <coughs> Director for Hidalgo County. I would now like to introduce Judge Richard Cortez. Good afternoon, fellow citizens. Uh, I'm here to uh, announce a new order. As all of you know, we have unprecedented challenges that are facing our community. This coronavirus is a serious matter, and we're taking this matter seriously. As of today, the latest testing that we have is we've tested 180 of our citizens. Eight have tested positive, or that's a 4.4% of the 180 that we've tested. 110 have tested negative, and we're still pending for 62. Out of the eight that were tested positive, four live in McAllen, Texas, two in Mission, one in Alamo, and one in Edinburgh. All have not needed to be hospitalized. They are now at home, isolated, trying to recover from this disease. There is an investigation ongoing to make sure that all the people that have been in contact with them are properly traced and looked at and alerted and precautions will be taken. In the past, I've made a comment to say these are, are new grounds, these are new territories. You know, we don't have this book of wisdom. I believe I was correct a few days ago in not really knowing, but I can tell you today that I was wrong. We do know how to stop this virus. We do know how to stop the spread. We do it by limited social gatherings and having separation from one another, sanitizing our environment, washing our hands, keeping our hands from our eyes and nose and mouth, but primarily separating ourselves from one another. How do we do this? We live in a free country, a country that all of us enjoy many, many freedoms. How do you dare come in and stop some of these freedoms that we enjoy each and every day? Well, Americans, and especially the people here in the Rio Grande Valley, and especially the people in Hidalgo County, always rise to the occasion. When something needs to be done, we come together and get it done. This is the time to put aside our self-interests. I have received many, many, many calls concerning their business, concerning certain things about them. There is no way we can approach this war, this battle, without incurring some hardship. We can't. But I'm going to tell you that I'm very proud of the action we're about to take because I can tell you that having a loss for four weeks is a lot better than having a loss for six months or more. We know now that other areas didn't take this virus seriously and now are suffering because of their inactions. New York, for example, the health care system is being overwhelmed. We cannot allow this to happen here. All of the medical community that has contacted me and, and spoken to me were all concerned. And these are people that care about you, want the best for you. So for that and other reasons, today I signed an emergency order that's effective tomorrow, March the 26th of 2020, at 11.59 p.m. And it'll last until April 10th of 2020 at 11.59 p.m. Hopefully, we will not need to extend it, but we will if we have to. 
The order talks about the movement of people and the occupancy of the premises. It talks about the essential activities, the essential businesses. It talks about healthcare industry, government, retail, services, the news media, healthcare. And it also talks about price control. Take the time to read it. The last order that I signed was a three page order. This one is 11 pages. There's always unintended consequences to all the actions that we take. We've tried to be very careful in writing this order. We wanted to accommodate as many people as we could, as many industries as we could, as many businesses as we could, but there will always be an unintended consequence. So we'd like to hear about those things, and if need be, we'll modify the order. But please, again, take time to read it. We have 22 cities in Ottawa County, and each city is going to be responsible for enforcement. So if you have questions about one thing or the other, after you reading the order, and you still need some clearance or clarification, contact your city. Let your city help you with any answers that you have. If not, we have a hotline, and let me give it to you. It's 956-292-7765. I'm going to tell you that I am just so proud to be living in this community. I have been pretty much in daily contact with all the mayors, our commissioners here, the staff, law enforcement, and our medical community. Boy, how lucky we are to have so many people that care about you and want to do the right things. We will win this war. We will win it together. So I end with, may God bless us all, and I thank you, and please, please, Work with us in abiding by this emergency order. I thank you. I'm now going to read a few questions that uh, have been transmitted to me uh, via uh, the Internet uh, for this panel. And I'll begin with Judge Cortez. So this indicates that this is a shelter-at-home order. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, we're trying to keep people that do not provide essential services to stay at home. And this, this is the best way for us to stop, to stop the spreading of this ugly disease. Perhaps one of the most essential services is the grocery store. And there have been long lines of residents uh, waiting for uh, the ability to shop for groceries. Is there any advice for those uh, who are waiting in line? Well, the advice for those that are waiting in line, first of all, to, to, to seek separation of six feet, six feet or more. We're trying to do everything possible. Today I had several phone calls with, with different people. I believe HEB is volunteering to help those in most need by providing food, food for, for them through, through nonprofits, so we're going to be working with that. I think a lot of the providers of, of groceries are, are, are recognizing the need to be careful, to make sure that we don't over-congregate inside, inside their facilities and outside. I believe that we've had some, some concerns that people are still gathering together. We're just going to have to learn together, but I, I think that all of us reminding one another what to do will help us police and make, and make ourselves better. Governor Abbott has called on uh, area hospitals in Texas to expand their capacity. Uh, to what effect is that uh, affecting Hidalgo County? I'll turn this over to the doctor or, or, or Mr. Olivares. Yes, so uh, Ivan Melendez, uh, Hidalgo County Health Authority. So that is correct. The uh, general philosophy is to try to eliminate all those elective uh, uh, procedures that uh, we're used to doing. Uh, an example of an elective procedure might be a cosmetic procedure, uh, might be a, 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 a joint repair, replacement of a, of a particular by, uh, articulation. Those are, of course, are significant problems and people suffer. They wouldn't choose that. 
but the idea is to really be selective and provide those services that are, that are needed now, not those that are elective. What that has done, that has facilitated uh, more equipment, more protective, personal protective uh, equipment, as well as more uh, ventilators, uh, CPAPs, other equipment that might be available um, uh, in the case that we uh, should uh, see a rising number in the hospital admissions for critically ill people. Additionally, through the Office of Emergency Management in the Hidalgo County Health and Human Services, we are also monitoring uh, the beds capacity and the activity in the ICUs in, of each hospital in partnership with the Department of State uh, Health Services, the Texas Department of Emergency Management, and the Hospital Preparedness Program. These communications are being done at a state and regional level to be able to have a clear picture of what the capacity is at our hospitals at any given time. There's an electronic system that's being monitored to assess that. Currently, there is no COVID-19 hospitalized clients or patients in any of our hospitals in Hidalgo County. Uh, however, they are fully aware that that might be changing in the future, but at this point, there is none. I'd also like to very briefly say that, uh, anecdotally, uh, the hospitals are seeing uh, slightly less volume than they usually would, so it sounds like people are, are heeding the instructions to seek only care if, if you feel you dramatically need it. And secondly, the private practitioners in the community, as well as those physicians that are involved in delivery of health care to the incarceration facilities and to other public facilities are greatly stepping up the use of telemedicine in order to limit both the provider and the patient to, uh, to office exposure. Judge, can you give us other highlights that are in this 11-page order? Well, yes, I, I, want, I want to talk about, uh, about uh, price control. I'd like to turn it over to our DA if he would like, he would like to talk about uh, price control and price gouging. Yes, uh, Ricardo Rodriguez here, uh, district attorney and also uh, a legal counsel for, for the county. Um, price gouging is, is something that uh, we, we want to try to stop um, and, and we want to enforce uh, the laws that are available uh, to us. Now, under the orders, uh, it gives law enforcement the opportunity to enforce price gouging uh, where one could be fined $1,000 or one could be jailed up to 180 days um, in custody. And in enforcing these, the, the price gouging, uh, myself, the sheriff, again, state, local law enforcement, we've gone together uh, to, to understand uh, what price gouging is and making sure that uh, we meet the elements of price gouging when enforcing uh, this law. <clears throat> These orders are very important, especially in the price gouging. Uh, we want the citizens of Hidalgo County to know that we are going to be very vigilant, uh, law enforcement-wise. Uh, we we want to make sure that we protect the citizens in the sense of giving them an opportunity to be able to get and buy the necessities that they need for themselves and their families. These orders are very important and we're asking that they be followed. Obviously there's penalties to these orders and again when we talk about, about price gouging, um, it, it matters again that uh, every citizen out there uh, is able to stay healthy and is able to have the necessities that they need. So we will use everything that we can within our power to enforce uh, this law uh, and making sure that we stop it. Now, the, you, can make, you can make a complaint to the Attorney General's office. There's a 1-800 number that's available. You can make a complaint to them about any individual or business uh, that is uh, uh, price gouging. Um, you can make a complaint to our office as well. You can make a complaint to the Sheriff's office and also to uh, the municipal, uh, the local uh, police department. You can make a complaint to them. Again, we have, we have gathered before, and we're going to gather again. Uh, when I say we, we're talking about the sheriff's office, state agencies, uh, and municipal agencies. Uh, we're going to gather again tomorrow, uh, not only to enforce the price gouging, but also to, to discuss and enforcing the orders uh, that are in place, uh, that will be in, in, in place as of tomorrow uh, midnight. Um, and, and, and I want to thank the county judge. I want to thank the commissioners. Uh, for, for putting these orders in place. They have not uh, been easy decisions to make. Uh, they're, they're difficult decisions. 
but obviously they've been in, they've been in, they're in disposition uh, to be able to make uh, the best decisions that they can uh, for the citizens of Dallas County, and they have been doing that. So I commend them. I commend the county judge and everyone else uh, who has been part of making sure that the best orders are in place, uh, because these orders are a matter of life and death. Simply put, they're a, they're a matter of life and death. If these orders are not followed, someone could die. There could be grave consequences. So again, we're asking uh, that you please help us. Help us uh, as a community to make sure that these orders are followed. And again, law enforcement will be vigilant, uh, especially on the, on the price gouging. We have a team that's set up already between the sheriff's office and, and our investigators as well that if there's a complaint that's made, we're going to evaluate the complaint. And uh, if after evaluate, evaluating the complaint, then if we have to visit the business or the individual, uh, then, that, then that will be done uh, to be able to stop uh, and do away with price gouging. Sheriff, would you like to add anything? Again, because the order specifically includes uh, price gouging, so you, we have the ability to, to uh, write the citation, and you will be facing uh, not only the, the civil penalties, but also the criminal penalties under the, uh, under the order, which, the, like the DA said, 180 days in jail or a, a fine up to $1,000. In addition to that, we have uh, we, we we talk about the Hidalgo County operations uh, in in the order. We talk about the things that the county courthouse facilities, uh, the the new hours and the new business operations we're going to have. Also, also the courthouse, of course, uh, we're eliminating all out of county travel for a period of time. Any symptomatic employees should be will be going home. All our county parks will be closed and committees and boards will be ceased uh, to have any personal meetings. So we're looking at ourselves to really follow, follow the same uh, logical uh, criteria that, that, the or, that the order has. Can we get an update on the status of testing in Hidalgo County, particularly as it relates to the possibility of drive-through testing? Currently in Hidalgo County, there are several private areas who are conducting testing. They're called specialty clinics. There's a misunderstanding about drive-through testing. There is no public testing or public on-demand testing taking place. Uh, and the drive-through concept is not is a traditional definition. There are specialty clinics where a person who has been authorized to go get tested by their local physician and or through investigative means, they would come in quickly and the testing would be conducted through their vehicle uh, with appropriate trained personnel to do that. That is being done through some of the local private sector and Hidalgo County Health and Human Services is conducting investigative testing only currently for investigations for some of the contacts and their uh, immediate people that they may have exposed to review testing. So that is being addressed, but it has to be coordinated through your local physician and coordinated through the Hidalgo County Health and Human Services in accordance to state guidelines set forth by the Department of State Health Services and the CDC. Uh, the only thing I would add is that our hotline number that we have yesterday, we saw over 400 phone calls, uh, half of them were uh, directly related uh, on particular medical questions. And the number one question that keeps getting asked over and over is how do I get tested? And so the question you bring up is a, a question that I get daily. In fact, I've had today no less than 10 phone calls from my uh, physician colleagues in the community asking me how do we test these folks. Important to understand very simply and very abruptly, it is like this. If you believe you need to get tested, you go see your physician. Your physician will review with you, and if he agrees that you need to be tested, either because you have symptoms or you have travel or you've been in contact, then he will call the Hidalgo County Health Department, and he will talk to one of the epidemiologists who then will confirm the requirements that we have for testing. And then if they agree, and it's pretty straightforward, if you have the criteria of symptoms, travel, or contact, or not and, but or, then they will give this person a particular date and time to come by to what people are referring to as drive-through testing, which Mr. Olivares just explained, 
in order so that we can test everyone in a very organized and safe manner, both to the potential patient as well as to the staff that's doing the test. They'll get a specific time, Friday, example, 10 o'clock in the morning. They will come, they'll have identification, that will be uh, pointed toward the exactly point where, and then the appropriate personnel will come and test them. That result will be uh, made available to their physician. Uh, in the event that that result is positive, then they will also be contacted by our, our investigators. So the key is, how do I get tested? One, good news, we have a lot more capacity to test. Two is, we have a partnership with the private community that's helping us. And three is, the, the gate, the door, the key is your primary care provider who will in turn call our office and will get a specific time for you if it is appropriate. The final question in English is uh, to Judge Cortez. Are there any considerations or discussions among uh, leaders in the RGV to ask the governor to declare a statewide shelter-in-place order? Uh, not that I'm aware of. I have not. I have not been in any meeting with any other elected officials where we would be asking the governor to do that. I surmise that I, I think that's that's a very possible situation because of of, of the growth that we've had with this this virus uh, here here in, in Texas. Let me say that uh, I mean a lot of thought has gone through to this order. Uh, I've received a lot of information. Uh, most of these. Uh, Positive tests have been coming from travel-related uh, instances. Uh, what do we do when somebody flies into our county through the airport? What do we do when a trucker from, from Mexico crosses our border? What do we do when a trucker coming in from the outside uh, comes to deliver to deliver groceries and, and supplies and things of this nature? You know, what do we do when someone comes into a bus? All of those things we're looking at, all of those things we're trying to improve, all of those things we're trying to find solutions to it. Uh, so just kind of bear with us. We're, 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 we're trying to, to identify all the things we can do to put you in the best position. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, if, if there's one recommendation we can all, all hear and hear over and over again, the best way not to get infected is to stay away from people Sanitize your, your environment. Don't touch your eyes. Don't touch your nose. Don't touch your mouth. And, uh, and if you're unsure whether you have it or you don't have it, isolate yourself for 14 days and, 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 and you'll be in a better position to do it. Doctor, did I miss anything in, 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 in that summary? No, I think those are the recommendations that have been uh, over and over. And I think the recommendations you made are universal. The only thing I would add to it, Judge, is that um, we still, as a physician community, uh, are believing that a lot of people are underestimating uh, what the current situation is. Um, and if you do just mathematical analysis on the numbers that we've had, and I won't do that for you because uh, uh, it, I think it's a, a kind of a shocking number, uh, but we have no way of saying how many people in the community actually are carrying this virus, but if you extrapolate the numbers of eight positive cases and, three, and 180 tested people, if you extrapolate that into one million people, the numbers are in the thousands. I am not saying that as a fact. I'm not saying that there are thousands of people because we have no way of knowing. I'm just purely saying that if you use a pure statistical mathematical formula that the epidemiologists tend to use, you know, the educated guess would be in the thousands, not eight. So we just want the community to understand that you're not any way underestimating the impact in the community and that at times these uh, recommendations seem decronian or they seem extremely uh, uh, intense. And I think it takes, a, a, as our DA said, I think it takes a tremendous amount of courage uh, to move forward on this level of commitment to safety. Uh, and so if you follow the drop of precaution, stay safe, keep away from each other, Please look at the numbers and extrapolate it, and you'll see that this is a quite impressive potential number that are out there in the community already. Imagine if we don't isolate. I'd now like to call on my colleague, Carolina Teran, to ask a few questions in Spanish. Uh, muchísimas gracias. Tengan todos muy buenas tardes. Uh, quisiera hablar, an antes de uh, hacer una pregunta, eh, el comentario de el juez Richard Cortés, de un pequeño resumen en cuanto a la orden que se estará eh, pronunciando para el día de mañana y si hay alguna diferencia entre el toque de queda, que sería el curfew, 
o si hay algún encierro que sería el lockdown. Un, un resumen, si es tan amable, de lo que es, se está presentando hoy. ¿Un resumen de todo lo que se está...? No, no, de la orden que usted está haciendo para mañana, que comenzará mañana. Pues, pues la orden para mañana es, 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 hay, es, es, hay, la orden tiene 11 páginas, pero básicamente lo que estamos preguntando, no preguntando, exigiendo a la gente que se quede en la casa, que no salga allí por 24 horas por día, la orden es de dos semanas, comienza mañana a las 11.59 en la noche y va a durar por dos, por dos semanas. La única manera que puedan salir y, y, y de su casa es que sean, este, que sean servicios necesarios, un negocio necesario. Y lo que es necesario, francamente, es ir a, a, a buscar elementos para la, para la casa y posiblemente este, servicios este, médicos o, o si están trabajando para alguien que, que, que sea necesario que, que, que que, que, que trabaje en ese, en ese lugar. Es, básicamente, esto es lo que esta orden hace. Ok. La siguiente pregunta, quizás, a los doc a, al doctor y a Olivares, sería en cuanto a los exámenes médicos que se están haciendo y si hay uh, alguna detección de alguien que esté tratando de hacer uh, algún examen falso, diciéndole a la persona a lo mejor que tiene el coronavirus y que esto en realidad no lo tiene. Bueno, ahorita mismo, uh, las áreas que estamos, o sea, ha habido unas llamadas que ha habido unos, unas personas que se representan como doctor o se representan como médicos. Ha habido bastantes llamadas, especialmente a las personas de tercera edad y a las personas localmente que están ofreciendo diferentes tratamientos, diferentes, uh, diferentes medicinas para asistir en el coronavirus. En realidad, es mejor que se comunique con su doctor que usted ha tenido por varios años, con su médico local, porque ahorita ha habido muchos, uh, muchas diferentes personas que han llamado por teléfono o por internet que están ofreciendo bastantes tratamientos, bastante uh, protección, uh, diferente equipo para prevenir el coronavirus. Y la cosa es que, desafortunadamente, esa gente está abusando a nuestra pública y es importante que todos estemos al tanto de eso. Yo nada más me gustaría añadir lo siguiente. Eh, sabemos que hay casos a nivel estatal en donde han intentado vender vacunas por el Internet, uh -huh. que obviamente no existen y estos servicios de Internet se suspendieron. Hemos visto personas en, en la carretera en, en Edimburgo eh, vendiendo rollos de papel por 25 dólares. Eh, hemos visto personas que tienen sanitantes de, de 2 dólares, tienen 25 dólares. Eh, entonces hay que tener mucho cuidado. Específicamente a la pregunta de pruebas y gente más representando, quiero recordar al, al pueblo que este, este proceso de, eh, de hacer las pruebas a la comunidad es un proceso que conlleva la coordinación del departamento del sheriff, del departamento de legal, y tenemos personas en, en la área que estamos haciendo nuestras pruebas que son parte del sistema policiaco, del sistema de, 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 de legal. Entonces, somos un equipo, no es nada más un grupo de doctores y enfermeros eh, que estamos este, eh, haciendo los estudios sin eh, ayuda, dirección y protección. Entonces, si nosotros detectamos fraude, si alguien viene eh, fraudulento, entonces hay repercusiones inmediatas si nos damos cuenta. Una vez más, el mensaje más importante que queremos dejarle en relación a las pruebas es que la persona que tiene la llave para abrir el candado de la prueba es su médico familiar. Su médico familiar, si no tiene médico familiar, hay una lista larga que podemos proveer a ustedes para que vayan, pero el médico familiar va a hacer la, la llamada a nuestro departamento de salud para iniciar el proceso. Eh, lo, también lo que, lo que quisiera decir al, al público es que esas órdenes uh, van a estar puestas en la internet uh, del condado uh, o, o el website del condado en inglés y en español uh, para el público para que, para que pueda uh, tener uh, una, una oportunidad de, de leer uh, estas órdenes en español también. 
Muchísimas gracias y queremos recordarle al público también que nuestra línea de emergencias en caso de que usted tenga alguna pregunta es el 956-292-7765. Gracias. That will conclude our press conference with a reminder that now that the judge has signed this order, it will be filed in the Hidalgo County Clerk's Office. And once that occurs, we will post it online at the county website, hidalgocounty.us. Thank you for your time.